Her decrees are my inheritance forever. <coughs> the joy of my heart they are. How, How sweet, sweet to my taste is your promise. I gasp with open mouth in my yearning for your commands. How, How sweet, sweet to my, my taste, taste is your promise. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The disciples approached Jesus and said, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child over, placed it in their midst and said, amen I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that their angels in heaven always look upon the face of my heavenly Father. What is your opinion? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, will he not leave the ninety-nine in the hills and go in search of the stray? And if he finds it, amen, I say to you, he rejoices more over it than over ninety-nine that, he, that did not stray. In just the same way, it is not the will of your heavenly Father that one of these little ones be lost. The Gospel of the Lord. In this Gospel, we hear the doctrine of our church which says that God has a universal salvific will. In other words, God wants everyone to be saved. But God will not impose himself on anyone. He will not force, he will not coerce, he invites. And the challenge is, are we open to that invitation? Or are we like those reportedly discussed in the first reading from Ezekiel, that rebellious house? Any parent knows how important it is to make rules for their children. And why do they make rules? Because with their best lights, they strive to form their children in a way that they will be the best version of themselves. The reality is that we ourselves don't have perfect knowledge, and sometimes our rules aren't perfect. But we believe in a God who is perfect, and his rules are really perfect. Today, we celebrate the feast of St. Teresa Benedict of the Cross. You may have known her to be by the name Edith Stein. She was a Jewish child and was a practicing Jew, from what I understand, until about 14. And then the world got a hold of her and the anti-God, atheistic worldview tainted her belief. But she was a genius, incredibly intelligent woman, and was drawn into philosophy and had a deep passion for what is true. And as she studied and looked and struggled, she came across St. Teresa of Avila's, um, I think it was the Ascent of Mount Carmel. And in one evening, she read the entire thing, and she put down that book and said something to the effect, this is the truth. And it led her to conversion. It led her to become a Carmelite sister. And she was a Carmelite sister who 
was Jewish by heritage. And when the Nazis came, she was arrested. Something which she foresaw, I believe, in some of her writings years before it happened, in saying that she would see her own life as a gift to God. It's an amazing thing how human history can be so duped and deceived. Why was it so important, seemingly, for the Nazis to destroy the Jewish people? I doubt if they were thinking in these terms, but in my own reflections, it seems as though this would be a logical thing for the devil to push someone to do. Because if you look at all the world religions, there is only one religion that has historical roots. Yes, it gets complicated. The first 11 chapters of Genesis, we would understand that to be a historical etiology. But among all the other creation stories, there's something unique about the Genesis account, Genesis account. It's not some kind of weird primordial chaos that comes together and just poofs out of nothing. No, it is God who creates a historical man and a historical woman, not some of Ur, demiurge or some kind of godlike creature like the Greek gods and fighting and in turmoil and, and frustration. No. God creates a man and a woman. And from Adam and Eve come the entire human race. In other words, the whole human genesis comes from human beings by God. And as you probably know, Adam in the Hebrew literally comes from the word earth. And Eve means beginning. So earth and the beginning come together to bring forth all of humanity. This is our creation story, which the Catholic Church believes to be, as I said, a historical etiology. In other words, a story rooted in truth. And that there was a beginning here. And that the Jewish people are the chosen people of God that was entrusted to carry this salvation message to the ends of the earth. And there was a movement in Germany that really, I think, finds its, its roots in a philosopher named Feuerbach, and it was taken up to be Nietzsche, and the whole idea that God is dead. And the only way that one could come up with a proof in my own mind that God is dead is you have to kill the historical people of God. Because if the historical people of God no longer exist, then how can there be a historical God? But any efforts to destroy God is futile because God is our protector. And our Catholic faith, literally, really, we are a Jewish denomination. We fulfill the, the Jewish scriptures, and I, I can't help but believe that St. Teresa Benedict of the Cross understood this. And she understood her love for her Jewish people and the fulfillment of that promise that led her to give her own life where she was murdered and killed and incinerated in Auschwitz. One of the most powerful things I've seen in my life is a few years ago before the pandemic, I had an opportunity to travel to Poland and I actually stood on the grounds of Auschwitz. And to imagine that humanity could be, so, that, that leaders could become so corrupt and so deceived and so drunk with power that they would incinerate and build human death factories. I think it was 1,800 people a day that they would kill in Auschwitz. 1,800 a day. My brothers and sisters, as Christians, we need to help the world from spoiling. We're called to be the salt of the earth. We must try and love even those who hate us. But we must help our world begin this pursuit of truth once again. Truth is not what we believe. It's not what I want. It's what is. 
And Teresa Benedicta understood this. It was her life's passion. And God allowed her to experience that truth in his church, which is there to help humanity discover this reality of all that's true, good, and beautiful. Sadly, I think many of our leaders no longer believe in God. They certainly don't believe that there's a truth. We look in our reading today, how Jesus wants us to be innocent like children, to be childlike, not childish, to protect these vulnerable human beings. This is why the church is so adamant about life beginning at conception and not ending until natural death. We need to be the champion of such things because if we can respect all life and get others to do so, our own lives will be protect protected as well. But when we can somehow negotiate and think that this life is more valuable than that life, or that, let's see, there's two different ways of legal process. If you're politically connected and we like your policies, then my goodness, we, we're not going to touch you legally, but boy, if we don't, we can do that because you're not thinking correctly. You actually think there's an objective truth. There is, my brothers. And that's Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit who invites us to embrace it. And you know what? If we do, it just fills us with joy. And it gives us the courage to even give up our life laughingly. Strange how Teresa Benedict of the Cross knew and understood that she would die because of the tyranny that she was subject to. And she did it to glorify God and to bring healing to her people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We pray for the church that she may be a light to the nations and a guide to all peoples, we pray to the Lord. For all nations throughout the world, that they may know and serve the common good and not be motivated by greed and self-interest, we pray to the Lord. For Jerry Harmonis Armasinski, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. For more vocations to the priesthood, religious life, faith-filled marriages, and the dedicated single life, we pray to the Lord. For an end of the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. For all those who have suffered from COVID or are suffering from COVID, that they recover or that God will comfort them in all the, the aftermath of these horrible things, we pray to the Lord. That all corruption in our world, especially in the church, be uncovered and those responsible for it lose their power or be, be converted so that we can have leaders that respect life, religious liberty, and all that's in accord with natural law, we pray to the Lord. For peace in Ukraine and all the regions of the world that suffer under tyrannical or incomp incompetent rule, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, Hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. 